So this really is a ton of information that we need to familiarize ourselves with, both in terms of all of the different types of weather observations and forecasts and those notums and TFRs. Is there any way that we can get all of this information like a one-stop shop? Now, as you start flying and as you continue your training, you'll get more familiar with how to get this information on your own, just like we went over in this class here. But is there a service that we can use to make sure we're getting all this information? Yeah, absolutely. This is what Flight Service is. Flight Service is a, a government contract that's run for the FAA to provide information, flight information to pilots. And one of the things that they do is they provide what's called a standard briefing uh, as a pre-flight service to pilots. So before you take off on your flight, you can call the flight service briefer and, and the, the, the number is listed there. It's actually, they turned a 1-800 number into a website. It's kind of a, a mash of 20th and 21st century technology. Um, but you could call that 1-800-WX-BRIEF number to talk to a flight service specialist and they'll be looking at the exact same information, the exact same resources that we've just used in this course and be able to give you all the information you need. So when you ask for a standard weather briefing and you give them the information of your planned flight, this is what they're gonna provide for you. They're gonna provide the adverse conditions along your route of flight. And then if it would warrant them to do so, they would tell you VFR flight not recommended. They're giving you an advisory that because of the conditions on your route of flight, they would recommend that you not continue VFR if that were necessary. Then they're going to give you a synopsis. This is usually involving uh, what the dominant pressure system is over the area for the flight, if there's low or high pressure, a cold front, etc. The current conditions are going to involve looking at the METARs in your current area and in your destination as well. And then there'll be an en route forecast. This will involve looking at the TAFs along the route of flight as well as looking at some of the PROG charts for the route. The destination forecast will involve looking at the TAFs at your destination to make sure that when you're scheduled to arrive, the weather is going to be favorable or not. You'll get a winds aloft forecast. So again, they'll just be looking at the VORs that are relevant for your route of flight and what the forecast winds aloft are at the altitude you say you want to go at. And then they'll tell you about any notums, any notices to airmen that are going to affect your route of flight, and any ATC delays, any ground stops or anything like that at the uh, airports that you're intending to go to. So this is what a standard briefing looks like. So we're going to go ahead and call up 1-800-WX-BRIEF, and then we're going to ask the briefer that we talk to for a standard weather briefing for a hypothetical flight. Now, we're in Maryland, and we could be boring and we could ask for a weather briefing from Maryland, but as you saw, the weather's pretty nice tonight. So let's have a little fun with the briefer and let's look up a couple of airports in Texas where the weather is not so nice and let's see exactly what the briefer is going to tell us. Uh, obviously, the longer or, or the, uh, the more adverse the weather, the longer the briefing is going to be. So let's have a little fun with the briefer tonight. Hopefully, they're a good sport. We're going to ask them for a briefing for a flight between. Amarillo and Lubbock, Texas, which is in that area that we were looking at with uh, the storms and the turbulence. So let's see what that looks like. Flight of flight service. Hi, how you doing? I'd like to get a, a standard briefing for a flight. Uh, I'm not actually going to be conducting the flight. I'd just like to get a briefing for instructional purposes tonight, if you don't mind. Okay. IFR, VFR. VFR. Okay. And call sign and where are you departing? It's going to be November 6155 Kilo, departing from Kilo Alpha Mike Alpha. Okay, Amarillo. That's right. Hey, I definitely say don't go today. <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of nasty there, isn't it? Yeah, well, I, I picked it for a reason. I'd like to. I'd, I'd like you to give me your worst uh, on the on the briefing, if you don't mind. <laughs> okay, no problem. And what type of aircraft and potentially? pretending you're going, when would you depart? It's going to be a Cessna 172, and we're going to be, let's let's say we're departing 10 minutes from now. Okay. Uh, let's see. So that would be 03Z. And where would you be going? Let's do Lubbock. That's uh, Lima Bravo Bravo. Okay. Full stop, touch and go and back, or what? Uh, just one way is fine. Full stop. Okay. And what altitude on winds aloft did you want to check? They start at six for that area. Let's do six. Okay. 
and those are valid for a thousand feet above and below. And in a real life situation, we don't have any air moats, but we have a convective sigma. Now most of the activity is east of you. I would tell you, I wouldn't necessarily say VFR flight's not recommended. I just don't think any flight's recommended right now because of the thunderstorms, especially if you were going eastbound. But you would still be in the convective segment right. area, or at least as far south as plain view. So um, surface analysis, we have an outflow off the trough of low pressure, which extends from a low near La Junta, Colorado, into a low near... Oh, probably close to, let's see what's over there, Las Cruces, New Mexico. Moisture for that is coming off a tropical uh, depression. I'm not sure if it's a hurricane yet, but it's off the southeast corner of Baja, California, right at the entrance to the Sea of Cortez. So that's where the moisture for this area is coming from. It's not related at all to Imelda that's a flooding Houston and all that area. But you guys have some really nasty storms in that area and have all night. The tops have been above flight level 450 right now, again, from departure to about plain view. Convective segment 13 central is valid. Area of thunderstorms moving northeast at 15 knots. Tops above flight level 450. And that really is the only adverse condition we have for that area now thunder severe thunderstorm warning we don't normally brief on those those are more uh, civilian versus uh, aviation but they do have a severe thunderstorm warning and can't find the number 54 i guess that is for a severe thunderstorm 11 miles north of i don't even know how to say this in Darity, 15 miles northeast of floyd data um, which is near Plainview. It's moving southeast at 15, not, uh, 15 miles per hour and has hail in it, quarter size hail. So that's moving southeast. The main body of the thunderstorms is moving northeast, though. So. And then we're required to tell you what's going to happen with the weather system. Um, we can't tell you, oh, it's a stationary system, uh, but we do have to give movement. And in this case, the trough is still going to be there for the next two or three days, I think, and you're going to get a lot more rain. Mainly, this is showing on the New Mexico side of the line. I don't know how those thunderstorms know to stop right at the state line, but that's where they put it. Yeah, kind of funny, I think, but let's see. Now, for the actual radar, if you were, in fact, going today or right now, I honestly would not recommend anyone going out unless they were headed straight west. And even then, you're within 20 miles of some really severe activity, and you can have um, turbulence associated with that, lightning strikes, and hail can come out the top of those. These are pretty high. Um, and it goes down. There's one cell right almost on top of Lubbock right now, and it is showing as extreme. So roughly from Borger to Hereford to about Leveland, anywhere east of that, you have activity. Much more solid in the eastern portion. And I do see the hail core, that one that I said was a, had a warning. Sometimes you can see them. They have a little bitty downshaft right in the middle. And um, you can see it because it's going to show up as extreme, 65 to 70 dBZs a lot of times on the hail core. Um, so that's what we've got weather pattern tonight. And as far as current weather at Amarillo, at the field, it just shows a few clouds at 1, 2,000. Visibility, 1, 0. But your winds, as far as being a student, um, this is going to exceed any wind, you know, crosswind or whatever. I don't know what. They have an east-west runway at Amarillo, don't they? Uh, I don't know, actually. I'm in, I I, I'm in Maryland. I just picked you guys because of the weather tonight. Are you serious? <laughs> I've talked to you guys before. I've, no, I've done that before. It's like, okay, if they, I, I'm not sure Amarillo may have a crosswind runway. The winds <laughs> at the surface are 090 at 25, guess 33. Visibility 10, few at 1, 2,000. Temperature 1, niner. It's pretty cold for this time of year in mm. there. Uh, dew point 1, 6, altimeter 3, 0, 0, 0. Lightning distance south, 
and Southwest. And let's see what they, no, I've had somebody call once that did the same thing as you are. You know, we're, we just want to practice. And I say, where are you right now? And they're like, somewhere East Coast. I'm like, oh. That's just wrong. The, we- the, the, the weather's too nice in Maryland to do a standard briefing here. We need we need something interesting. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you guys have high pressure covering exactly. the, third, it the entire do. Atlantic seaboard except from Savannah South. So. Yeah, yeah, no um, complaints here. Now, yeah, if I, if I, do you even know where the Texas Panhandle is? <laughs> I'm just kidding. Um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, to I'm, I'm gonna pretend I know. I, it's it's the one that extends to the north, right? Correct. Okay, the all right. the Panhandle of it's under the panhandle of Oklahoma. I got it. I had a 50-50 shot. Yeah. Yeah, I know you did good. I'm picking on you now. <laughs> anyway, um, so those points that I mentioned, Plainview, Floyd Data, Floyd Data actually is how it's pronounced. There's a, they're on a line to Lubbock. Mm-hmm. And that, that's why, honestly, I would tell somebody not to go if you were over here. And then Lubbock itself, well, in route, you've got light rain. Oh, that's border. Thunderstorms in the vicinity of Tampa. These are all in the panhandle. Okay. Thunderstorms near Hereford, thunderstorms near Plainview, lots of lightning. And especially at night, if they're not wrapped up in a lot of low clouds, you could see them from a state away. Mm-hmm. Driving on I-35 south from Oklahoma City to Dallas, you could see them in the panhandle because they're so massive, the buildups. I've seen 70,000 tops. Yeah, wow. Light level seven zero zero in the Texas Panhandle one night marched all the way across. This is about fifteen years ago. They were there all night. It never weakened ever. Yeah, it's a so, good, it's it's a great sight if you're on the ground, right? Uh, yeah, I was driving. Well, I was driving to from Oklahoma City to Dallas one day, and I could see the ones that were in Arkansas. Wow. Yeah, and Oklahoma's not small either. It's I mean, it's not as big as Texas, but. And I'm sitting in Fort Worth area, so um, let's see. Lubbock, 8,500 scattered, ceiling 1, 2,000 broken, so that's good VFR. Visibility, 1, 0. Winds are out of the east, so all of these are, the winds are out of the east, southeast. But the gust of 33 would keep most pilots from going. Absolutely. Especially students. It would exceed most aircraft um, wind limitations as far as, you know, flight schools. A lot of them won't let you go if it's over 15 knots. And this is 25 gust 33. Yeah, that's that's heavy. And so Lubbock weather's good. Temperature 27. See, that's a big difference in the temperature, 19 and 27. And their altimeter, 29 or 9 or 5. I don't have any pilot reports. I did have some earlier. They were severe reports. Um, but they were um, airlines. You know, like Boeing 767, Boeing whatever, you know. Uh, we get a lot of Airbuses going from west coast to east coast at night through that area also so they were just getting beat up tonight in that area I bet. but they were high higher altitude but i did see one at eight thousand feet it had light to moderate turbulence at eight thousand and i can't remember if it was out of Amarillo or dallas so a lot going on and then we would check the forecast if you were going mm-hmm. and the terminal for amarillo which is valid from now through zero five Z, which for me here and Amarillo were central time. That's midnight, mm-hmm. and they call for the rain showers to continue, and the winds are not going to drop off. Zero nine or zero one eight gust two eight, with visibility greater than six. Light rain showers. Clouds are okay. Four thousand scattered. Eight thousand overcast. Now, are you familiar with the graphical forecast? Yes. Okay, we're not real fond of it, but <laughs> it's what we've got. Sure. So. And sometimes it can be really good, but anytime you have a few of scattered clouds, it's sometimes it will not give the bases on that. And bases are supposed to be MSL, but sometimes if that's correct, then they've got the base of the clouds below the ground. It looks like they put in an AGL layer. Oh, because interesting. I didn't yeah. know that. So it's different yeah. than the it's different than the METAR and the TAF. Yes, and those are AGL, but this is MSL. The old area forecasts were MSL also, mm. unless it said AGL or ceiling. Now, in this case, it says clear skies in the panhandle, but then they've got this little bitty area of clouds uh, that are all around Amarillo to the northeast, and they say clear for uh, Lubbock. But we do have clouds, and there's thunderstorms near there. There's a, that one cell's almost on top of them. So sometimes you have to take it with a grain of salt, mm-hmm. and what I do 
we're required to give you that if you don't have a terminal. I mean, terminals, unless you're East Coast, up in the, well, from I've flown from New Jersey to Delaware, it's approach control the whole space, mm-hmm. the whole way. So you can basically brief off just terminals because they butt up against each other. Right. And West Texas, no, Texas, anywhere in Texas, really. Now, the other chart is the one that gives you thunderstorm information, visibility, and it's not coming up. It's been really slow less last week and this week and it also gives you thunderstorm probability and in this case for the next three hours west texas calls for 60 to 100 percent probability um numerous thunderstorms okay so that's a lot and i think that might be coverage 60 to 100 percent coverage they don't okay yeah the other one is the probability which that doesn't cover my thunderstorms. Because you've got isolated, which is 10 to 20% coverage, scattered 30 to 50, numerous 60 to 100. Those are kind of, I think, I'd have to look that up on here. But anyway, they've got thunderstorms that are going to continue for at least the next three hours. We're going to get inundated with um, Imelda. Right. Uh, Visibilities, for the most part, unless you're in a thunderstorm, should be unrestricted. And then the terminal at Lubbock calls for now through 18Z, 8,000 scattered, ceiling 2, 5,000 broken, visibility greater than 6, wind 100 at 11. Obviously, that's not quite correct either because they do have those thunderstorms right over the field almost. Right. And they, there are certain criteria for the Weather Service or whoever issues these, the terminal forecast office, they can have a thunderstorm at the field and not be required to update it, Mm. whatever their little rules or parameters are. So you have to kind of look at everything, you know, the current weather, the terminals, the area forecast, and kind of paint a picture. That's what my job is. Well, that's that's why we're calling you tonight for the context. Oh, yeah. I've been doing this a long time. (laughs) Sounds like it. And uh, I know way too much about weather. I'm better than the TV guys. Just kidding. That's great. <laughs> no, seriously. Sometimes we are. Um, and we've got a lot of equipment and different products that we access to tell you. Now, the winds aloft for 6,000 or 160 at 20. So you've got a southerly flow out of the east and right at 6,000, which has to be uh, 3,000, not 3,000 feet above the surface field elevation so you have they only give it for six in west texas because elevation so high so you've got a shift from winds out of the east to almost straight out of the south right which that you definitely gonna have to pay attention to airspeed and all that and you know uh, don't be taking your hands off the yoke right when you get hit in the face you know it that can be dangerous that kind of wind situation so and then next, what we do, uh, let's see, our NOTAMs. A lot of airports in southeast Texas are at close because of so much water on the runway. They shut down Intercontinental in Houston, hmm. and I put in NOTAMs along the coast where they've got all that. But right now, West Texas, even though they've got the runways are wet, they haven't called us with any NOTAMs yet. So runway 4 and 22 is closed Tuesday through Friday, 00Z to 13Z. So they must be doing something at night and, and that's on it, that runway. And that, that, that's at Lubbock or Amarillo? That's Amarillo. Amarillo. But it doesn't start till the 24th, so they're shutting it down at night. Okay. And that would be 7 o'clock to 7 a.m., so 12 hours. And then they've got some localizer-type directional aids out of service. And some ILS components, but you wouldn't be doing ILS. The TAR, terminal area radar, secondary surveillance radar is out on the 25th, so that's a scheduled outage. A lot of these are scheduled. A lot of taxiway notams, and I tell pilots, if you have this many, get progressive, because they've changed the names of almost every taxiway Mm -hmm. there. And then for Lubbock, runway 17 left, 35 right is closed. That started on September 1st, goes to October 1st. So they must be doing something on the runway. 
something. And runway eight, the Pappy's out, one seven right, the Pappy's out. That's not till the 20th tomorrow morning, and it's only going to be for two hours. Hmm. And a lot of signs are out, um, holding position signs and stuff like that on taxiways. They have the tower there too. Uh, they have one in light antenna, it's 5.7 northeast, shouldn't be an issue even at night, it's only 400 AGL, close to that. But there is a crane, um, but it's five miles away, it is flagged and lighted daily, it's only sunrise to sunset. Then we ask you, um, on a real briefing situation, what you're using for navigation, are you doing GPS, VORs, pilotage, what? We call it pilotage. It <laughs> okay, now you just say, okay, it's... 100 miles south and I'm going to fly heading 180 right. eventually you'll get there Yeah. Uh, so I don't have anything out anyway airspace notams in that area that I'm in free balloons not till tomorrow um, and that why am I getting Arizona uh, and the reason being is because Arizona and north the Texas Panhandle are in Albuquerque Center airspace I see yeah, so we have that. FTC notice if you did an instrument approaches, we checked that. Not too much. Um, well, there's some air refueling routes out there. We're required to brief um, restricted areas. Now, at Amarillo, there's a prohibited area just north of the airport. And it has to do with nuclear something. I can't remember. It's a, I don't remember the name of it, but it's prohibited. It is on the sectional. Okay. And there are only a few places like that. They do something new, nuclear, chemical, or I can't remember. It's been a long time. You can look it up. <laughs> find it on the chart and look it up. Yeah, we will. Um, it's kind of interesting. And then, uh, well, one thing we have here in Texas also, you have the Predator drones out of San Angelo. They have a TFR on that because they're 66-foot wingspan, which is kind of cool. Okay. Anyway, any questions? No, th no, thank you. This has been great. I really appreciate you going through the uh, the motions for us. <laughs> no problem. <laughs> <laughs> well, like, okay, you've got high pressure. Or it's going to stay there for a couple of days. Yeah, we're going to stay. Yeah. We're going to stay in Maryland. <laughs> uh, but you guys have you have all that um, special flight rules area and stuff like that, right? Yeah, it's not so bad. It is if you don't work it every day. <laughs> exactly. I, That's a good point. I didn't know what. I didn't know that that prohibited area was Camp David. Mm -hmm. Yep. I just didn't think about it. I was like, oh, gosh. I mean, I brief all over the United States anymore. But you guys have a good evening. If you need anything else, just call us back. You do the same. Thanks very much. Okay. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. All right. People in Texas are so friendly, aren't they? So I told you it was going to be long. The worse the weather, the longer those briefings get. But hopefully you were able to uh, follow along, uh, at least with the some of the notes that I was trying to write down as I was talking to the briefer about all of the different conditions that we would have expected on the flight. So depending on the weather, depending on the conditions, depending on uh, how friendly your briefer is, it'll sort of determine how these briefings go. But as you fly, I definitely encourage you to get in the habit of getting these briefings and then to try to follow along on aviationweather.gov and sort of see where they're getting that information from. So that's the sources of flight information class. That's all of the sources that we're going to use when we're doing our flight planning for weather and other flight information that we need. The next class is going to deal with nav navigation. These are going to be the basics of how we find our way around and the different ways that we use to navigate once we're in the air. So we'll see you back for class 10 navigation.